What's Saturn's great white spot? Or its northern storm? Let's take a closer look to find out where the storm did form. Saturn's great white spot is somewhat a periodic storm. At 28.5 year intervals, it's kind of its norm. The storm happens about once in every Saturn year. That's about 29.4 Earth years, just so we are clear. When the storm does erupt, it shoots waves up into the stratosphere of Saturn, making it misbehave. When this happened, a spacecraft, Nicassini, happened to be orbiting Saturn that showed Earth what it now sees. A couple of days after NASA first spotted the storm on Saturn, its winds had sheared the storm in both directions as it formed. At this point, the Great White Spot had wrapped all the way across the planet. That is a fact. The storm only wrapped around Saturn's northern hemisphere. What if this took place on Earth? Of this I will share. If the storm acted the same on Earth as shown here, it would wrap around the entire northern hemisphere. The storm would last for a very long time with no escape for humans. As you've learned in this rhyme, if this happened on Earth, it would be like going from the cold winters in Alaska to the heights of the Mojave in the summer sun. This storm on Saturn can almost be as large as the Earth at 6,200 miles wide. It's incredible, let's move forward. What's Saturn's great white spot or its northern storm? Let's take a closer look to find out where the storm did form. Saturn and I have 82 moons from the date of this song's release there may be more soon Saturn's the sixth planet from the Sun with rings that surround my planet system these rings are made of pieces of comets and asteroids or shattered moons my rings you can avoid as of the date of this video I have 82 moons in 1655 my first moon Titan was discovered it's true my largest moon is Titan, the cold and icy orb, with a golden hazy atmosphere you can't ignore. Titan is the second largest moon in the solar system, after Ganymede orbiting Jupiter where it's fun. In the future you will learn more about my moon Titan, when NASA launches the Dragonfly mission. It will launch in 2027 with an eight-bladed drone-like craft called the Quadcopter making short flights around Titan's surface on its path. During the 2.7 year baseline mission, I do confess, Dragonfly will study how far pre-life chemistry may have progressed. Christian Huygens made the discovery of my largest moon named Titan you have seen. Enceladus is the sixth largest moon of Saturn. It's a tenth of the size of Titan, but still present as it turns. There's a global ocean of liquid salty water beneath its crust that jets icy particles into space in which it does gush. William Herschel discovered Enceladus, my moon, in 1789. Maybe you will discover more soon. Here's Prometheus and Pandora. They act as shepherds, flocking icy particles into a narrow band, I'm sure. These particles and moons make up my F ring. A narrow band which is 60 miles wide, I sing. I'm Saturn and I have 82 moons. From the date of this song's release, there may be more soon. One of the biggest storms in our solar system is the great Pressure region is persistent and long with wind speed.
was formed. The Great Red Spot, it was officially named since astronomers telescopes did take aim. It produces wind speeds up to 150 miles per hour, but from a distance looks like red beauty with power. Jupiter's dry atmosphere is made up of elements I name. Hydrogen, helium, ammonia, and methane. These same elements are what made up the sun. So why didn't Jupiter become a star? called the magnetosphere the reason life develops and continues to keep us alive is because of this magnetic environment it's why we thrive what's this magnetosphere and what does it protect us from let's take a closer look as we move towards the sun when the sun blasts plasma from the solar storm it emits huge bursts of energy and solar flares form solar flares are burst from the sun during an eruption pushed into space the solar and cosmic particle radiation this electromagnetic radiation from the sun does reach the earth and could destroy the atmosphere while on its run but the atmosphere is protected when these particles reach it by the magnetosphere deflecting when these particles do hit the magnetosphere changes shape when blasted with these particles directing them away from the atmosphere so they aren't harmful if our atmosphere were to deteriorate over time life on earth would perish you've learned this in this rhyme some of the particles aren't deflected away but have no fear when they get trapped in earth's magnetosphere the trapped particles get shot towards Earth's two poles in the field lines, also called the dipole, which means two poles. When these particles reach the atmosphere, they react with oxygen and nitrogen, causing the auroras that appear. Let's take a closer look at where this magnetosphere is formed. We'll slice the Earth in half so you're visually informed. The electrically charged molten iron churns for sure below the Earth's surface with Within the planet's outer core This generates a magnetic field Large enough to race Far past our Earth's atmosphere Out into space I am the sun, the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation This radiation I expel is called the solar flare You'll learn about them in this song and why you should care The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots, they are real. This energy released is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares, so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions Millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections, as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings. 
beings even with such power The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms By absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm When a CME is too big it creates a solar superstorm That occur once or twice a century so you've been warned If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age It would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun I do say If this type of CME traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore when it snaps it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored this creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm Normally no living thing on earth would even know it had formed The only thing it would affect is your electricity Because you rely on this so much it would disrupt human life you see Because earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers This geomagnetic storm would shut down the power humans would be overturned If one of these storms hit the earth electricity and internet would not work All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks Computers would wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices No refrigerators or any other household appliances Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms Their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids Until the solar storm passes earth Preventing blackouts we forbid Humans need to prepare for these types of storms To prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form a cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform i'm the life-giving sun you all need me to live but i am unpredictable so solar storms i give i am the sun the center of your solar system i do erupt intense high energy radiation this radiation i expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in the song and why you should care I'm a star called the sun I'm the center
2021 PH 27 I am currently the new closest object to the sun I stole Mercury status of the sun's closest object I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked Discovered by Scott Shepard at the CTIO on August 13th, 2021 in the country of Chile, you know. Scott Shepard discovered me using the Dark Energy Survey, or DES for short. In space, I'm on display. I was discovered at apparent magnitude 19 from the Earth. Let me explain just what that means. Apparent magnitude is a measure of the brightest of a star. I am currently the new closest object to the sun I stole Mercury status of the sun's closest object I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked My perihelion is closer than Mercury at the closest orbit to the sun My aphelion is farther than Venus when my orbit is farthest from the sun I have the smallest semi-minor axis of fun and shortest orbital period among all asteroids as of 2021. I take 113 days to orbit the sun. That makes me the fastest orbiting asteroid and I'm not done. I'm expected to be larger than one kilometer in diameter. Next to Mercury's diameter of 4,800 kilometers. I'm smaller, professionally designated 2021 PH 27 while orbiting the sun by the minor planet center on my run. None of this info would be possible without astronomers. Maybe you could study astronomy. It's out of this world, I'm sure. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury status of the sun's closest object. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury status of the sun's closest object. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star. I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far. My name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well. Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell. I'm EBLMJ 555-57AB. My name's Trappist 1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight. I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star. I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far. Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star, that's me. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2 Composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true My name is Pollux, a red giant star here Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear R136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far. Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the 
the stars We're all stars, we're all stars Compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars Our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium Here we go We're all stars, we're all stars Compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars Our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium Here we go So life can grow There is only one planet we know so far That is teeming with life, of course That planet that we're sure can sustain real life Has a well-known name, it is the Earth If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto The sun would be the size of a pea The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury The Earth's water would quickly boil away 
there would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water is the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name is Mercury I'm the second hottest planet But the closest one to the sun A year on my surface is 88 I'm the smallest but lots of fun My name is Venus I'm the hottest planet But the second planet from the sun I'm the brightest planet in our solar system And I'm too hot for anyone My name is Earth I'm the planet you live on And the third planet from the sun I'm the only planet so take care of me cause we're all one There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name is Mars I am red in color And the fourth planet from the sun I have the highest mountain in our solar system A volcano named Olympus Mons My name is Jupiter I am covered in clouds And I'm the fifth planet from the sun My giant red spot is a raging storm As for a size, I'm the biggest one My name is Saturn I am brown in color I'm the sixth planet Sun. My outer rings are extremely thin They're made of dust and icy chunks There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name's Uranus I am blue in color seventh planet from the sun I orbit the sun once in 84 Earth years and was discovered in 1781 My name is Neptune and also blue in color I'm the eighth planet from the sun I'm the last gas giant in our solar system and I'm also the coldest one There are eight in the solar system and we revolve around the sun join us to learn about the different planets now sing along and have some fun this is a size comparison of objects in our universe We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am Ceres. I am a dwarf planet. 
Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well, but didn't plan it. I am Hamea, a dwarf planet in this group. Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Aries is a dwarf planet in this mix. The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow! Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow. Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big. Check out Planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice, and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Tories, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Ken is Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.Y. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way galaxy, and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with glee. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk from the constellation of Mosca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I'm a star with a circumstellar disk from the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU. Now this. I'm found in the constellation of Muska, hear this I'm a B-type star with an exoplanet that does orbit I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see It is HD 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the very large telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star, that is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report, that's enough about me Back again, it's HD 100546. Let me tell you a bit more about my disc. My circumstellar disc was observed by the Hubble telescope, which should spiral patterns what they mean, no one really knows. My disc is fairly flat with a circular shape, with a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet. How great! When looking at the night sky, try to locate the constellation of Muska, but you have to look late. 
I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass And 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked I, though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth And I'm the closest star to the sun For what that is worth Discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins, I'm sure In South Africa at the Union Observatory In Johannesburg My Latin name Proximus Centauri Means when this is defined The nearest star of Centaurus That's all that's assigned We're Alpha Centauri The closest the star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. I'm a supermassive black hole found in the center of almost all massive galaxies. I'm a supermassive black hole. There are theories of how I'm formed. Come and join me and see. Join me.
sing with me, do it loud without any doubt. I'm a supermassive black hole found in the center of almost all massive galaxies. I'm a supermassive black hole. There are theories of how I'm born. Come and join me and see. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy. In the year of 1781, he discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine. Million years, as for an estimate, that's fine. I've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel, becoming a super giant after I expanded and I cool. I expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova. Here is more, leaving a neutron star or black hole, but no one knows for sure. I'm classified as a blue white super giant star, how fun! Which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun. I belong to the Orion constellation Locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun my brightness is so grand but i'll vary slightly in brightness until the day i'm done i'm thought to be 18 to 24 times more massive than your sun my radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference Which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference My surface temperature is 12,100 K K meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI I say The next time you're out at night, look for Orion in the sky Look for the hunter's leg, I'm bright to the naked eye My name is Rigel a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. This is a solar expedition on renewable energy We'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity Our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free Let's harness this power through silicon into batteries What is solar power? It's the conversion of energy from our sunlight into electricity Our sun's a natural nuclear reactor You should know It's the most abundant energy resource on earth I'll show Now what's a photon? They're light particles produced by the sun They're made by nuclear fusion Shot into space in all directions It takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds For a photon to run Before it reaches our earth From the surface of our sun Photons are made of electromagnetic radiation they're tiny packets of energy I convert into electricity for fun On a photovoltaic cell, a solar cell you see I'm like an electrical leaf, I use the sun to produce energy Solar panels are made up of me, small solar cells These cells are made from silicon, of this I will tell Silicon is a semiconductor, for what it is worth And one of the most abundant elements on the planet Earth And a solar cell there are three layers shown right here I will tell you about each layer as they appear The thin top layer does contain silicon, you should know And a tiny amount of an element called phosphorus I show the phosphorus has more electrons than the silicon does That means there are more electrons
electrons making this area more conductive This layer with the phosphorus gives electrons more room to roam Which makes it negatively charged so it's called the n-type as shown The bottom layer contains silicon and an element called boron Which has fewer electrons than the surrounding silicon Because of the fewer electrons this layer is positively charged That's why it's called the p-type layer as shown at large My middle layer is called the p-n Junction. Soon we'll see what happens when photons hit me from the sun Silicon atoms are connected to its neighbor by four strong bonds This keeps the electrons in place in which I'm not so fond When a photon shoots into a solar cell with enough energy It can knock off an electron from its bond Leaving a hole you see The negatively charged electron and positively charged hole Are now free to roam around but there's only one way each can go because of the electrical field in the p-n junction The electrons drawn to the n-type and the hole is drawn to the p-type They run the mobile electrons are collected by metal strips at the top of the solar cell From there they flow to the external circuit to power a light bulb I tell They flow through and return to the conductive aluminum sheet on my back Then they return from where they came from with no waste that's a fact A single solar panel has many solar cells to create more energy in a small space to keep your home running well when too much energy is produced it gets sent back to the electrical grid to help produce more electricity for some other kid the sun produces more energy each hour than we will ever need there's so many ways that we can create renewable energy this is a solar expedition on renewable energy we'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free Let's harness this power through silicon into batteries! I am the Y Canis Majoris One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 When French astronomer Jérôme Lalande Locked me in my recordings begun A red class M hypergiant's what I'm classified as Now let's focus a bit closer on what makes up this star class Hypergiant stars show tremendous luminosities And have very high rates of mass loss by stellar winds you see my distance from the Earth is about 4,000 light years away One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles, I'd say I used to be the largest star in the universe, you see Until some hypergiants like you, Iskatai, dwarfed me I am the Y Canis Majoris One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris my home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky You'd have to use the telescope, you can't see me with the naked eye If you have a telescope, point to the constellation of Canis Major And look to the left of the Delta Star for a fixation 990 million kilometers is my radius, aren't you glad you are paying attention One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course Scientists think I'll explode into a super Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris, 
My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am V.Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V.Y. Canis Majoris, my home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation After the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel that's what they are helium has accumulated in my core so well and hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells when my outer shells expand i take on a red color because i'm cooler than i was i'm happy to discover red super giants are the largest known stars in the universe and i'm expected to supernova Go on to the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel Without even trying When that happens to a star as massive as me The entire star collapses and explodes It's a supernova you see When I do supernova I'll create quite a sight Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode Into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this This celestial event is called a solar eclipse Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this A solar eclipse is caused by the moon, that is me I pass in between the sun and the Earth till black is what you see here are several stages and some visual tips that you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse. Stage 1 is called a partial eclipse, is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this. Stage 2 is called Bailey's Beats, which are bright spots of light. It's when low-lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through, that's right. Stage 3 is sometimes called the diamond ring, this stage is key which marks the last few seconds before totality. The last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low-lying valleys creates a single flash of light on the side of the moon. The fourth and most important stage is called totality. When the moon completely covers the disk of the sun, this is what you see. Then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the Bailey's beads, which once had shown. But before you see celestial event there's a few safety precautions for eye injuries to prevent this is a total solar eclipse come see my narrow path in which i travel on the earth's surface this is a total solar eclipse 
My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. On Monday, August 21st, 2017, there's a total solar eclipse North America will see. But the totality you want to see can only be observed from Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say, seen in 14 states in the continental U.S. of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there and please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online, so protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time. This is a total solar eclipse. Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss. Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must. Here's a penumbra, a partially shaded outer region. Surrounding the umbra, a fully shaded inner part that's darkened. A partial eclipse is what you're seeing right here. When only part of the luminary of a celestial body is darkened there. This is a total which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this.